What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and we are going through my predictions for the 2021 season on the ATP rankings. So I'm going to try and predict in order what the top 10 is going to look like and then in 12 months time we can see how close I was or how bad I was, I guess. After we have the 2021 season, maybe a full season, maybe not. We don't know that. So here's the current top 10 at the moment. We have Novak Djokovic, number one in the world. Rafa Nadal is number two in the world. Dominic Team is number three. Daniel Medvedev, number four. Number five is Roger Federer. Number six, Stefano Tsitsipas. Number seven, Alexander Zverev. Number eight is Andre Rublev. Number nine, Diego Schwartzman. And number 10 is Matteo Berrettini. So there you have it. They are the rankings. That is what we're starting with. Now we've got to remember, for the first couple of months of the season, the rankings are locked in. They don't change. Until I think about March, when the rankings go back to normal and players can start losing points. So that's what I'm going to base my predictions on. So my prediction for who I think is going to end up as the number 10 player in the world in 12 months time at the end of 2021 is Andre Rublev as the 10th player. So he had a breakout season in 2020, won a bunch of tournaments, made it into the top eight, got to the London finals. I think he's going to have a bit of a backslide. I think that he had a great season. I think he's going to have a little bit of a backstep and I think he's going to drop down a couple of rankings. Speaking of 2020, he defeated Dominic Team, Stefano Tsitsipas, Matteo Berrettini, David Goffin, and Batista Agu. So some good names there, some good wins there. But he has to defend six titles in 2021, including three ATP 500s and three ATP 250s. However, he can gain a lot of points at some tournaments. He can make some points up at Miami, Monte Carlo, Madrid, Rome, Canada, and Wimbledon, and also the ATP Cup, which he didn't play last year for Team Russia. So if he plays those events, he might be able to maintain his rankings points, but it might be a little bit tough. So there, Rublev slots in at the number 10 spot for 2021 at the end of the next season. Coming in at number nine in my predictions is David Goffin. So... Goffin currently outside the top 10. He's been in the top 10 before. He's been up at the top of the game the last few years. His points at the ATP Cup have been protected. Remember, he beat Rafa at the ATP Cup at the start of this year. But he does, however, have to save points from the Cincinnati final that he made in 2019 and also the Hella final he made in 2019. So there's two big tournaments he has to defend points for. But he has a lot of points he can gain in tournaments like Miami, Monte Carlo, Madrid, Rome, Canada, the Australian Open, and Roland Garros. So he can make up a lot of points at some big events there. So there, David Goffin, he slots in at number nine. Let's go to the number eight for my predictions towards the end of next season. Who's going to be number eight? I'm predicting that it's going to be Denis Shapovalov as the number eight player in the world this time next year. The points that he made at the ATP Cup, they have been protected because of the ranking system. And he also has a lot of points up for grabs at the Grand Slams, including Australian Open and Wimbledon. Also Cincinnati, Canada, Miami, Shanghai, and even the French Open. He could, if he made the second week of that tournament, get a lot of points. So Chapeau has a lot of upside, and the only real points that he has to defend is the Paris Masters from 2019, where he made the final, and a couple of semifinals in Miami and Rome, and also the Stockholm title that he won back in 2019. So he has a lot of upside, Chapeau. That's why I've put him in at number eight. All right, let's move on to the number seven spot now. So the number seven at the moment is Stefano Tsitsipas, and this time next year, I think he's going to stay there. I think Stefano Tsitsipas is going to be the number seven in the world this time next year. Lucky for him at the majors. Apart from the semi-final of the French Open, he has a lot of points he can make up at the Australian Open, the US Open, and Wimbledon from 2019, where he lost in the first round. The only downside is that he has to defend a lot of points at the Masters 1000 level. He's got to defend a quarterfinal in Paris from 2019, semi-finals in Rome, Cincinnati, and Shanghai, and then the Madrid final all the way back in 2019, and the ATP finals that he won last year. So a lot of points to defend there for Stefano Tsitsipas. But there is some upside. He can make up some points in Miami, Cincinnati, the Australian Open, Wimbledon and the US Open. So if he does well at the majors next year, he could get a little bit higher than the ranking of seven. But I'm going to slot him at seven just to be safe. So there's the number seven spot, Stefano Tsitsipas. Let's go to the number six now. So the number six in the world this time next year is going to be Roger Federer. So this one's an interesting one. We didn't see much of Federer in 2020. We saw him at the Australian Open. Didn't play after that because of the knee injuries. But lucky for him, Indian Wells is not going to be played or it has been told that it's not going to be played and also the Australian Open, he made the semi-finals. So he protects both of those ranking points at those events. He can also make up points in Cincinnati, Canada, and the Paris Masters at the end of the year if he plays all those events. But the big downside for Roger Federer is that he's 
supposedly not going to play the clay court season, which means the French Open semi-final points from last year, 2019, are gone. Also, he made the quarterfinals of Madrid and Rome last year. Those points will disappear as well. So if Federer does choose not to play the clay season, he could drop lower than six. So there you have it. Roger Federer at number six. Number five now, I predicted for the 2021 season end will be Daniel Medvedev. So he is currently at number four. I think he's going to drop down one to number five. He does have his ATP Cup protected points from 2020. And he also has some points up for grabs in Miami, Madrid, Rome, Roland Garros, and Wimbledon. Remember the clay court season, he doesn't really like playing it, but if he does well, he'll get a lot of points out of it. Unfortunately, Medvedev's downfall is going to be in the second half of the season where he has so many points to defend. He's got to defend the US Open final of 2019. He's got to defend the Canada final of 2019. The Cincinnati and Shanghai titles of 2019 and the Paris Masters of this year. And of course, he's got to defend the ATP finals that he won this year as well. So a lot of points that he has to defend in the second half of the year. So I predicted he's going to drop down to number five. So let's go now to the number four player in the world this time next year, Alexander Zverev. So currently, Sasha Zverev is number seven in the world. So a big jump from seven to four. One of the reasons why I've backed Zverev to get into the number four spot this time next year, he's got the Australian Open of 2020, the semi-final protected points there. He could also make up a lot of points in Miami, Rome, Cincinnati, Wimbledon, and also the ATP Cup where he didn't get any points. So he plays the ATP Cup next year. He could get a lot of points. Also lost first round of Wimbledon, so remember that. But I'm still backing Zverev because he finished 2020 strong. He won a couple of titles after the French Open on the indoor hard courts, got to the Paris final as well, and played a decent A to B final. So I'm going to back him. And because of David Ferrer, he hired David Ferrer just around the break. And after the French Open, it really showed that Ferrer's making a difference. So I'm going to back the fact that Zverev has Ferrer in his corner, and Zverev's going to be at number four. So Zverev, number four in the world this time next year. Let's go to the number three player in the world. This time next year, I predict, is going to be Rafael Nadal. So Rafa is currently number two in the world, and I'm going to drop him down to number three by this time next year. The reason being, mainly, he has to defend a lot of points. So many points because every single tournament he played over the last two years, he made the quarterfinals or better. So his ranking points make up a lot from those quarterfinal or better results. He's got to defend the US Open title of 2019. He's got to defend the French Open title of 2020. He's also got to defend points from Canada 2019 and Rome of 2019. And he made the semifinals of Paris, Madrid and Monte Carlo all back in 2019. He can make up points in Miami, Cincinnati and Shanghai though. So there is hope. Kind of similar to Medvedev. Rafa has to defend so many points and I just don't think he can defend every single tournament, especially in a year where we also have the Olympics. So Rafa Nadal, I think, is going to drop down to number three by the end of next year. Let's go to the number two player in the world this time next year. My prediction for the number two player at the end of the 2021 season, I think it will be Dominic Team. So Domi Team, he's the US Open champion now. And the big reason I put him as number two is because the Australian Open final of 2020 and the Indian Wells title of 2019 they fall under the protected ranking points. So he won't lose any points if he loses in the first round of Australia, for example. He'll keep his ranking points. And he also has potentially points to make up in Miami, Monte Carlo, Rome, Wimbledon, and the Paris Masters at the end of the year because he lost in the first round of Wimbledon in 2019. And he didn't do great in a couple of clay court events over the 2019 season. So he has some points that he can make up. The only downside is that he has to defend the US Open title and the French Open final of 2019, but I think there's a lot there that he can make up those points if he does replicate those results in the 2021 season. So I think Dominic Team will be the number two player in the world this time next year. And that leaves one more spot. There's only one name missing out of the top 10, and he is currently the world number one, and I think this time next year, he's still going to be number one. It's Novak Djokovic. He is my predicted world number one, and these are the main reasons, because he's protected ranking points from the Australian Open and the ATB Cup. He could lose in the first round of both of those and still keep all his points. He has points that he can gain in Shanghai, Monte Carlo, Miami, and even the US Open. The only downside is that he has to defend points at Wimbledon, the French Open, uh, Paris Indoors, Cincinnati, 
Rome and Madrid. But I feel like 2021 Djokovic, he's had a tough 2020. I think 2021 Djokovic, he's going for records. He wants to beat Federer and Nadal's records. And he's also going to be super motivated to win the Olympics as well, which will get him a lot of points. So I'm picking Novak Djokovic with new motivation going into 2021 that he is going to stay at the top of the game. And he's also going to break a lot of records next year. So let's go through the top 10 now. So I've got number 10, Rublev. Number nine, David Goffin. Number eight, Denis Shapovalov. Number seven, Stefano Tsitsipas. Number six, Roger Federer. Number five, Daniel Medvedev. Number four, Alexander Zverev. Number three, Rafa Nadal. Number two, Dominic Team. And the number one in the world at the end of the 2021 season, I think is going to be Novak Djokovic. So there it is. That is my predictions for the 2021 rankings by the end of next year. The top 10 rankings by the end of next year. Let me know in the comments down below. Have I made any mistakes? Have I missed anybody? Is there anyone outside the top 10 that you think deserves to be in? Or is there anyone in the top 10 that shouldn't be there? Do you think Zverev's a little bit high? Do you think Shapo deserves to be there? Do you think Djokovic will be the world number one? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I want to know your rankings, your top 10 predictions. Let me know in the comments down below who is going to be in the top 10 next year and what's the order going to be. I want to know from you guys. And in 12 months' time, we'll find out if I was right with any of these or if I got them all wrong.